Hello and welcome to Gardening Naturally with Green Fingertips with me, Jessie Rainbird, your natural gardening coach. Today I'm talking about the common mistakes you should avoid when growing your garden naturally. So mistakes are all part of learning and growing. You'll have made many so far in your life and there's probably many more to come. So don't worry too much if you've made some of these mistakes already, but wouldn't it be lovely if we had a little heads up to help you avoid making a few of those mistakes? I think I would appreciate that if I had the option. So here are a few common gardening mistakes you can now avoid making when growing your garden naturally. So tip number one, put the soil first. <laughs> that's all I can say to that one. So that's a big mistake that people make if they don't put enough importance in soil. The soil is the heart of your garden and if you put the time and the energy into conditioning and improving and giving your garden the very best soil that you can possibly create, your garden's going to repay you with a with a beautiful and healthy garden. Now, the soil, the nutrients and the ecosystem in the soil will help to keep your plants happy and healthy. This is going to cut down a lot of work for you. So if you put the time and the effort into looking after the soil, it's going to repay you with less work in the long run. If you would like a beautiful and bountiful garden, then you definitely need to start with the foundations and start with good soil. Number two, understanding where the light falls in your garden. A lot of people overlook this and it can sometimes be a bit of, you just want to know where you're going to sit in the summer, where to avoid the sun from glaring in the face and where to sit with a nice drink in an evening when it's going to be nice and warm. But there's a lot more to it than that. Light plays a massive role in the garden and it is extremely overlooked. Now, different aspects of your garden need different light levels. So the vegetable patch will need at least eight hours of sun and it needs a good shade in the afternoon. So if you plant vegetables in an area that gets mostly shade all day, they're not going to be very productive and not very happy or healthy. Knowing where the light falls in your garden and knowing where it kind of moves around your garden, how long it sits in different areas, that's very important. And that's a big mistake a lot of people make. So understand where the light falls in your garden. Track it. Keep an eye on it one day and just track where you can see which direction it goes and where it sits because it's good information. Number three, number three. This is a big one. I could do a whole video on this one. So taking too much on and burning yourself out. Now, I know I'm still like this now, um, years down the line of gardening, but new gardeners can often get very excited. Actually, all gardeners can get very excited, very enthusiastic and very excited. This can often, often exceed the skill level. So when this happens, it can lead to overwhelm, it can lead to too much more work than you can handle, and, and a lot of stress, which is never good. By taking on a bit less and adding a little bit each year, just keep going as you build your skill levels, it's gonna reduce that chance of becoming overwhelmed with your garden, losing the love for the garden because you can't keep on top of it, and burning yourself out. So little bit at a time as your skills grow, and as you can take on more, just add a little bit more each time. But that is a mistake that a lot of gardeners make. Regardless of skill level, we get a bit excited and we take on too much. We take a big project on. We can't handle it all, even on our own. We can't handle it all and it doesn't go quite right. And it just, it leads to disappointment and sadness in the garden. We can't be having that. So number three, don't take too much on. Understand your skill level. Understand the time that you've got available. Understand what you can actually take on and don't burn yourself out. So number four is not knowing your last frost date and when your season starts. So this is a key one, especially for now, because um, at the time of filming this, we are in February, we just started February, and we're heading rapidly into spring, which would be wonderful. I know it's a bit of distance away, but it's still, there's blue skies and it's good, but there is still a risk of frost. Now it may seem out there now, I know it's a little bit chilly, but it doesn't seem frosty, but... Knowing your last frost date and knowing when your season starts, that is key information that a lot of gardeners overlook. So knowing this information will help you plan your entire year from when you can start sowing your seeds to when you can start planting stuff out, what you can grow when, and yeah, and it just helps you plan everything out. Knowing those crucial dates, your last potential frost date, and when the spring weather starts to kick in, Knowing that really just gives you a go point and you know that you need to plan and get ready for all that time when you can just crack on. I will leave a link in the description for my sowing and growing guide for your vegetable patch. It's also got in there a map of the UK covering the different dates for the last frost. It will cover a variety of different vegetable plants that are easy to grow, 
And in the guide, it's got the first sowing dates, when you can sow inside, outside, when you can plant out, when you can harvest. And I've also got in there a diary to keep schedule of when you've sown, when you've seen first signs of life, which I love, I love doing that, keeping track of when they're sprouting, and when you've planted them out and when you harvest them. And I've also got in the back the companion planting guide as well. So you can see what vegetables go well together to help you plan out what you're gonna be growing together and how they're gonna support each other. So that's really good as well. So it's all easy information. The link will be in the description below, so you can check that out. And yeah, so you can download that now. So also knowing your last frost date will help you to support the wildlife living in your garden. So if you know how long it's gonna be before they can start foraging for themselves and getting back into life, if you like, rather than being dormant and asleep. You know how much longer you need to be feeding them if you're feeding them and how far you can start to cut the garden back and remove like all the dead growth that they could be living in. So you really want to know that. You don't want to be cutting them back early and having still having insects living in dried up leaves and hedgehogs buried under piles in the corner. You need to, once you know when the frosts are going to be going, you can kind of go, okay, then I'll leave it a couple of weeks after the last frost and then I can start really cutting everything back and tidying up. So that's a really good reason to know your last frost date as well, looking after the wildlife that lives in your garden. And number five, number five today is managing expectations. Now I hate saying this because it makes you feel like you're really dampening your spirits, but it's really quite sensible to do this sometimes. We spoke about excitement and enthusiasm. Now all gardeners have got this. It's just in our nature. We're excited about new life, new uh, growth, a flower coming out. We're excited and enthusiastic about all sorts of things in the garden. It's really great that we can do this and we feel this way, but it can cloud our judgment just a little. We often expect results faster than naturally possible. Now I can't do this as a collective, but I know I do. And we expect things to be more effective than they should be expected to be. Things aren't superhuman or super plant. <laughs> When you're growing your garden naturally, you need to take into account that when you treat a plant with a chemical product, the chemical products have been engineered to work faster, act faster, but there are always side effects with them. This is why I've decided not to use chemical products anymore in the garden. The side effects counter the goodness that they actually do. So by going for the natural product, okay, I have to treat more and I have to manage my expectations in the way that they take longer to act sometimes but the side effects aren't there and they often create more benefits than what I'm actually using them for. With these little pre-warnings you can check yourself before making the mistakes when growing your garden naturally. If you like this video give us a thumbs up. To find out more about number one on my list, why is your soil so important, check this video right here and I will see you in my next video. See you later!